This video was brought to you by Incogni. On Friday last week, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said that his country had effectively frozen its participation in the Russian-dominated Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO, accusing Russia, Armenia's historic security partner, of failing to fulfill its security obligations. For Armenia, this is just the latest step in a tricky maneuver aimed at breaking out of Russia's orbit and realigning itself closer to the West, a maneuver that has seen France in particular emerge as a valuable new partner. So in this video, we're going to explain why Armenia has fallen out with Russia, how France has gotten itself involved, and how it fits into a wider regional realignment. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Firstly, let's explain what the CSTO actually is. The CSTO is a Eurasian multinational military alliance that was formed in the 1990s by a loose club of post-Soviet countries following the dissolution of the USSR. And today it comprises of six members, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tajikistan. While the CSTO is far from being what the Warsaw Pact was for the Soviet Union, the CSTO does have a number of benefits for Russia. It's a good justification to have a military presence in other member countries. Russia, or indeed any member, can veto the establishment of other foreign bases within member states, and CSTO members are not allowed to join other military alliances. And much like NATO's Article 5, the CSTO's Article 4 states that an armed attack against one member state will be considered an attack against all members. The only time this has ever been exercised was in January 2022, when a CSTO force was deployed in Kazakhstan to protect key facilities amid a period of unrest that the Kazakh government claimed was stirred up by so-called foreign terrorists. Anyway, why is it that Armenia is turning its back on the CSTO, and more specifically on Russia? Well, as you may know, Armenia's primary security threat is Azerbaijan. Since their independence from the USSR, the two countries have fought a series of wars and conflicts that are a defining feature of their neighbourly relations. Now, as part of a ceasefire signed in November 2020, it was agreed that a Russian peacekeeping contingent would be deployed to Nagorno-Karabakh, which was an ethnically Armenian-dominated breakaway state inside Azerbaijan that was the centre of the many conflicts. But it's the actions, or lack of actions, by Russian peacekeepers that forced Armenia to reconsider Russia as a supposed security guarantor. Armenia accused Russia of failing to maintain the ceasefire, failing to prevent the effective blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh by Azerbaijan, and ultimately failing to prevent the lightning offensive in September 2023, in which Azerbaijan finally captured the entirety of Nagorno-Karabakh prompting virtually the entire ethnic Armenian population to flee for Armenia. Even after all of this, Armenia doesn't see the threat from Azerbaijan as having subsided. Just this month, Prime Minister Pashinyan accused Azerbaijan of preparing for a full-scale war against Armenia, possibly with the intention of capturing the land bridge that connects Azerbaijan proper with its Nakhchivan exclave. Now, Pashinyan has made no secret of his views on Armenia's security relationship with Russia, calling dependence on Russia a strategic mistake. And it's not even just because of what happened in Azerbaijan. Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 also strained relations with Armenia, with Armenia making it clear that it was not Russia's ally in relation to the war, and even sending humanitarian aid to Ukraine. Anyway, evidently Armenia is desperate to prepare for the possibility of another war with Azerbaijan and find an alternative security partner to Russia. And that's where France comes in. In October last year, France announced that it will be selling military hardware to Armenia so that it can ensure its defence. In fact, just last week, French Armed Forces Minister Sebastien Lecornu visited Armenia to announce a package of arms deals, including a contract to buy guns from French arms manufacturer PGM, an agreement for the French military to train a handful of Armenian soldiers at France's elite military academy, and the deployment of a French military advisor to Armenia specialising in air defence systems. 
Plus, there have been the sales of things like armored vehicles, radar, air defense systems, and more. Meanwhile, discussions about purchasing short-range Mistral missiles are ongoing. And at a verbal jab at Russia, Lukornu said that Armenia was looking to those partners who truly provide security. Now, around the time that the French defense minister was in Armenia, Armenia's prime minister was in France, meeting with President Emmanuel Macron, who reaffirmed France's unwavering support for Armenia's independence, its territorial integrity, and its aspiration for peace. All of this, by the way, has immensely annoyed Azerbaijan, whose president has accused France of destabilizing the region and stoking war. Meanwhile, France hasn't limited its efforts to build ties inside Russia's orbit to just Armenia. In November last year, Emmanuel Macron went to Central Asia, specifically Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, to strengthen, complement, and accelerate France's partnerships in the region, which hold fossil fuel and nuclear resources. Elsewhere, France has also delivered military aid to Moldova to help modernize its armed forces, and there are reports that the two countries will sign a defense cooperation agreement soon. Anyway, it was in an interview last week with French media that Nikol Pashinyan said that the CSTO had not fulfilled its objectives as far as Armenia is concerned, and that we have effectively frozen our participation in the organization, adding that as for what comes next, we shall have to see. Now, this seems surprising to the Kremlin, with the Kremlin's press secretary responding that Russia had not received any official notification from Armenia, adding that it's very important to understand the details here, and we hope that our Armenian friends will be able to explain everything to us. At the time of writing, it's not fully clear what Pashinyan meant by frozen, but it likely means that Armenia isn't, at least for now, fully withdrawing from the CSTO, and may just be limiting its cooperation going forward. To be honest, this is something Armenia has seemingly already been doing. For example, in January 2023, Pashinyan cancelled Armenia's hosting of that year's scheduled CSTO joint military drills, calling it inappropriate in the current situation. Within this context, it's particularly notable that Armenia held joint exercises with the United States in September, something that drew complaints from the Kremlin. It's not just in the military world that Armenia is turning away from Russia, though. It's happening elsewhere, too. At the beginning of this month, Armenia formally became a party to the International Criminal Court, having joined back in November. Now, as a party to the ICC, Armenia would be technically under the obligation to arrest Vladimir Putin were he to step foot on Armenian soil, as he's subject to an ICC arrest warrant for alleged war crimes. But there are limits to Armenia's ongoing realignment, Pashinyan, for example, said last week that Armenia doesn't currently plan on closing the Russian military base in the country as it relates to other treaties. Nonetheless, what we've described in this video forms part of a wider regional geographical realignment in the Southern Caucasus, Armenia's realignment, Azerbaijan's increased cooperation with Turkey and Israel, or Georgia's moves closer to the European Union, for example, all of which are occurring amid waning Russian influence in the region. Clearly, the current state of the world is plagued by uncertainty and risk. In fact, while you've been watching this video on Armenia, your personal information may have been sold or published online without you even knowing about it. Even while recording videos, we're constantly interrupted by robocalls. And if you're wondering why you've been getting so many random numbers calling your phone, well, the answer is the malevolent workings of shady forces called data brokers. These data brokers can collect and sell your personal information to anyone, from a company to an online criminal. This data can include your name and aliases, social security number, login credentials, home address, location history, online activity, and more. Even if you're not fussed about a phone call here or there, one day it could be a little call, but the next day a huge loan taken out in your name. In fact, that exact thing happened to me a few years ago. So if you want to protect your data, Incogni is here to help. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. Since many data brokers continue collecting your personal information even after they've removed it, Incogni also takes care that your data stays off the market by conducting repeated removal requests. So create an account with our link in the description, granting Cogni the ability to work on your behalf and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, if you use our link in the description, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video.